What is up? It is the Fit Gear Hunter, and today we are going to look at the Superset app, finally. So I would like to say this is sort of an initial review, but the reality is, is that I think this might hit on all the primary points, because we're going to look at it just to see the primary benefits it provides, my experience with it, and how I felt about it. We're going to look at it sort of alongside some other primary apps, uh, Athletic being the main one that most people use with an Apple Watch and to create, create that experience of training and recovery tracking. We're gonna look at it alongside um, Whoop to see how it compares there, just in simple summary snapshot. So we're gonna dive into a lot of different aspects there. So um, it has really changed how I feel about wearing an Apple Watch because for some reason, it's so polished and so clean right out of the gate that it makes me just feel like the Apple Watch is now competitive because it creates the experience that I have enjoyed on Whoop and on Garmin. I think there's some issues that we still need to touch base on about what data the actual Apple Watch compiles or provides. Because the reality is, is that without the full set of data, you know, there's a limit to, hey, no. There's a limit to how much you can actually provide analysis or feedback or recovery or any of those types of things. So we'll have to look at those things. So easiest thing to do. So we're just gonna dive into the app. So looking at the app, you get the landing page. And I have thankfully had the opportunity to at least provide some feedback um, because I think there's a couple things they could do to enhance this. But you can see at the top, it's got the recovery score. That's the primary thing, your sleep score, and then your strain score. These are the tenets. This is what it based on. It's like based on like these primary areas of like how hard you worked today, how hard you should work. It's got some recommendations there what your recovery is like based on some biological metrics and averages compared to long-term, and then what your sleep is like. So we're gonna actually start with sleep and dive into that. So you can see time in bed, time of sleep, and then sleep needed. One thing I really think this is great about this is that it takes into account, because you can dive into that, like what your sleep goal is, and you can adjust that recent strain and it adds some sleep now it only adds 11 minutes it only adds just like small pockets of sleep so it's never like you know 45 minutes of extra sleep um and i don't know where they're getting these numbers from but either way it takes into account the fact that you had a hard workout and then you need a little bit more sleep based recovery and then what do you see under that you see sleep debt which is just fantastic that is taken into account whether you've had good sleep recently and it's shooting you to try to get up to your average of seven hours over the course of seven days and so i've got to add an extra two minutes a day so you know not the most grandiose but very cool there it goes into all the stats that flow through now this is one of the benefits of the apple watch is that it you know is relatively decent in a very inaccurate world at sleep stage tracking. So you get that benefit of seeing all those things that just pulls right over. And then it's got really good color visual representation of how it looks across time. And each of the stages relative to past averages and your heart rate dip, which I think, you know, I haven't read a whole lot about what the physiological benefits of tracking your heart rate dip, I think is helpful and worthwhile as well as what I love is the sleep bank. So just a fantastic, full, comprehensive summary. So it takes what the Apple Watch is compiling in data and is useless for out of the box. So the Apple Watch is useless out of the box for like the, the aspects that it actually does compile to give you feedback and direction and even put it in a clear summary. And it, it makes it clear, it makes it well summarized. So the next we look at is recovery. Recovery is going to be sort of benchmarked off your HRV and you can see and you know it's, It is interesting because we can see HRV is 16.8 milliseconds. So last night I met up with friends went to a, a You know a restaurant got to meet the owner and I ate like a fat so But I enjoyed it. It was fantastic and it was all really healthy and you know, we had alcohol so but either way 
you know, it's like my HRV is lower than average, but it's 30 and somehow they're always compiling HRV variable at like 16 or 18 or it's like some different number. I don't know how it's calculated. Don't really care because it does sort of track for sure directly track the trend. But here you can see it, you know, on a graph when you had high recovery and low recovery like I did last night, you can see a recovery score across time. You can learn a lot more about it just by diving into the charts and then resting heart rate. That's another really big aspect to me when it comes to um, tracking these things. Resting heart rate was spiked and then respiratory rate was, well, I guess it was kind of average. I would have thought it would have been spiked a little bit there too. We're going to take a little bit of a journey. We're hitting the end of a trail at open water and I want to see if I can get the best area to see it. So um, the recovery tenants, you know, the thing that you have to know about recovery is that the HRV is not something Apple is officially tracking. So they, if you turn on AFib, so we'll go to Apple Health. If you like turn on AFib and you have this AFib history, because I told the Apple product, I have an AFib issue. It said, do you sure? Do you have a doctor's note? And you say, yes. It does track HRV more frequently because of that. But Apple has never said like we're tracking HRV. It's just what happens when you track AFib. So you get a lot of times when you say like show all data, you can see yesterday there was a, a number of 161. I didn't delete that yet, but oftentimes you see in the bottom 134, oftentimes those are inaccurate. So my average is never, ever on any other device and I use like seven different like HRV tracking devices it's never above a hundred it's never above 80 so to see these numbers just knows you have to know that a you should probably go in there and just delete those um, anything above three times your average so anything above what would be here 90 um, we know is inaccurate and even really probably above like two and a half times um, because this, you know, standard deviation is just way too far. So anyway, that's where it's getting its numbers. So we have to know that some of the HRV and the ability for Superset to give you feedback is not going to be perfect because Apple's not officially taking the data it needs to in order to provide that direction. So then you have a stress monitor. I there's everybody's doing stress monitors. Koros has got one now. Uh, Whoop has got one. Garmin's got one. Garmin's the only one that uses it. So the stress you can see, but it's just sort of arbitrary information. It doesn't give you direction in time. And everybody does it. Everybody says, here's your stress, but it's like, well, so what? I mean, you know, it's, and check out this vantage point. That's a pretty cool vantage point. I mean, <laughs> we're surrounded by water. Look at this, I mean, obviously you can see where I came from, but so Garmin is the only one that correlates it to body battery. So if somebody would do that, say not here's a arbitrary number of your stress, here's an evaluation of your stress, but say like, this is what it means. Like you had a high stress day in some other way, something quantifiable, cause we're all into like scores and numbers to know like you need to shoot for a lower score or you need to take some breathing time. And you know, it might have direction in here that says something about that, but Either way, that's um, what it does next. And then at the bottom, it does the tenets of what Whoop does that I like so much and what Athletic does. And we'll look at those in a second. You see the health monitor. And so you see this little row of information. So, you, you know, you get the same summary of some of the information you get off the recovery score, but resting heart rate, respiratory rate, SpO2 and temperature. Those are all indicators. So I got green, so they're all within line. So even though I ate, like a fat so and drank it didn't cause like a plummeting of anything necessarily um so this is like what I, I love looking at these five stats every day and whoop is one of my favorites for that very thing but this is the simplicity and then the last thing we're going to is strain so strain haven't done anything today so we've got to look at yesterday or something else so Here's yesterday's score. So it gave me 72% score. It wanted me because I had a better recovery the night before. It wanted me to really push it harder. Now I just did a, you know, I typically do like a 45 minute walk like I'm doing now and a CrossFit class and maybe some accessory work after, or maybe some cardio after, maybe some lifting after. 
but I just did a class because I was packed with the day. It was out of control. And so it gave me, you know, the score. You can dive into any of the scores and you can see what the Metcon looked like. This was true. It was like seven minute AMRAP, three minute rest, seven minute AMRAP in the middle, and then uh, some basically it was like rounds for quality, but some definite lifting uh, at the end. And um accessory stuff so you can see the zones it gives you all the information it's nothing glorious it doesn't give you like a a score and that's the only thing that i think they really have to change is on the strain aspects they need to give you like an evaluation like a load score now it is doing a load score but it needs to give you more when it evaluates the workout itself instead of just maybe the 72 72 percent strain and this is um well, that's the full day but i'm sorry when you go into a workout maybe something this is what the activity said 55 percent of this is contributing i just need more and then you can see in the middle underneath the duration total energy you can see the training load bar and that's where i think they need to put this on the front page and make training load tracking because when you dive into it it actually is really good look at this this is freaking crazy you see this? Look at that. I mean, look at that. What? Anyway, um, so back to the app. So they make the training load just great. It gives you the load ratio. So are you pushing yourself in the last little while, like seven days, longer than you, or harder than you push yourself on average per day in the last like 30? The training load, so I'm, I'm, optimal load so just like sort of maintaining because i'm not pushing myself harder it's not above one and then you can see the load balance you can see the actual numbers and you can see my long term coming down because i haven't been pushing it as much and that's probably fair in the last four weeks i've been just more maintaining because i've been recovering from a few different tweaks so it just i haven't pushed it extra and uh, that's you can see it so you can see all this it just needs to be in a different you know needs to be on the front page so that's how it compares and so when you go to look at other apps the primary one is athletic and you can see that it has all the same things you have recovery you can dive into that there it's just benchmarked off of your resting heart rate and your hrv and then you have your sleep sleep has all the stats in it i like how they do it i like that they show the restorative sleep which is your rem and deep sleep stages added together and compared to an average um and you can dive into your sleep debt you can see latency a lot of things on here and you can even you know see your heart rate so you can see there's a huge spike there in the beginning which shows that that's probably the wrong data point your energy burned you have all the health metrics down on the bottom it's, you know you have to dive into each one or dive into the page to be able to see it so you, you know you have all the same information even on the bottom you can go into workouts and you can see like an evaluation of that same workout and it'll show a, an uglier heart rate graph because it doesn't compile it very well and then you know the challenging it does give you training impulse like a trimp which is like a tr training load score which i like and so it does do that which is what i think it you know should do on the other app uh, on superset so it gives you everything but for whatever reason superset just feels it just feels sharper and it just it makes the experience feel like this is legit even though both of them are using the same data and we know by for a fact that the apple is not apple watch is not tracking true hrv tracking and that is a problem we we have to have awareness that that is an issue that will affect the validation or valuation the worthwhileness of the any apps recommendation because it's not taking hrv samples frequently enough it's not actually accurately taking them so all the time it sort of is so anyway um that's that and then if we look at at whoop you can see you know whoop gave me a 32 percent now 32 percent recovery score on the whoop and what did it say here free not yeah not not yesterday 32 percent so that's why i like it because it does track it you know if you look at ultra if i was to bring up my ultra human it would say my recovery score is like 85 percent it always says like 75 to 85 percent it's so frustrating because it has good data my dog is like running 
back and forth to the water. I don't think she's ever seen water. I don't know if you can see this. She is going crazy. She's like, I've never seen water before in my life. And it is 32 degrees Fahrenheit right now. My hand is like numb and it's zero degrees Celsius. If for those of you guys travel, you know, international. What is wrong with her? She's having the best time of her life, even though she's gonna have frozen paws. What is she doing? She's trying to combat. Hey, get out of there. No. Okay, we're gonna have to start walking back. No, no, Naya. So you can see from looking at Whoop, sorry for that diversion. You can see from looking at Whoop that it it has all the components. You can go to the health monitor, you can see the stats, everything, same sort of low stats. And it does have an 18, but it usually doesn't correlate with um, what you see on the HRV value and how it's calculating HRV on Superset or what it's using the data for. But you can see all the same things. And then you can go into components. It has the stress thing down there, which is a stress monitor. Everybody does. But it's, it's a replication of Whoop in some ways. And so the fact that it, and we'll put this away, the fact that it, uh, it makes it feel like you're having the same experience as you have on what I do believe is a comprehensive device that does a good job at giving you recovery tracking and training load tracking, strain tracking, all those things. I would say that um, it's making the Apple Watch viable for me. It's making it like something I might consider, something I might use. So it's changing that. And that is powerful for me as somebody that has long hated having to use a multiple of third-party apps if you want to make the Apple Watch functional for tracking your recovery and your training and your sleep. The main fault, shortcoming, is that I don't think your workout goals for how hard you push this today's workout should be based on your recovery because your life and schedule and training schedule can't match that. So I think that should be uh, below the actual training load tracking. So I think the training load tracking should come up in value and be a primary thing, which is what Garmin does and which is why I like Garmin. So if we were to compare it to Garmin, Garmin basically gives you all these things, but just has feedback and analysis based on it. So it takes the stress evaluation and gives you the body battery, which is the impact of stress and workouts and poor rest, all those things on your body's recovery, sort of internal reserves, which is quantifiable and helpful and useful. And Garmin does training status. It gives more detailed evaluation of the workout's impact on your fitness development. So called aerobic effect and um, anaerobic training effect. And they have your training load and cardio score, all those types of things tracked over time. And they provide other types of feedback. And so there's some ways to grow because I don't think strain should be the third benchmark item. I think it should be more based on training load and how they incorporate that, or at least have it on the primary page. So those are my thoughts on Superset. I do think it is, you know, I mean, it is changing how I feel about the Apple Watch as a solution. And I, I love it. I actually love that app and it's, okay, so probably the biggest, most profound thing I could say is that I look forward to its evaluation every morning alongside the other primary pieces, so Garmin and Whoop. Um, and that is saying a lot, and I never said that or was able to say that about what Athletic could provide for whatever reason. Um, I just don't, I just think Superset's doing it better and cleaner, and so I guess it makes it just um, feel more useful. So that is my thoughts. Those are my initial summary. That's my full, I guess, more comprehensive thoughts on Superset as a competitive app and how it is, in my opinion, changing what Apple Watch could stand for in the uh, training and recovery side of things and how it makes it competitive. So Vic, your hunter, thanks so much for watching.